Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, today I'm going to be reviewing this Black Sheep's Best Bitter on the Beer Monster, the nice fancy machine there you see behind me. Um, but this is not to be confused with the Black Sheep Ale that you get in supermarkets or Rig Welter or any variant. This Best Bitter is only available on cask or in these little mini kegs. Um, so I had to get one. It's 3.8%, so it's a proper session beer, which is good because we're having a proper session with this later on tonight after I've done this video, um, which you'll be able to watch live on my channel, but it will have already happened because I'll edit the video later. But anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to get it installed into the beer monster and then we shall resume. Yeah, as usual, I'm uh, wiping beer off my walls now. Okay, I've still not quite mastered the art of getting the keg into the beer monster without forgetting something. Um, you really need to get your finger over the kind of entry and exits to the port connectors, otherwise beer can go out the other way. Um, but anyway, this time it wasn't too bad to be honest. It wasn't a heavily carbonated beer, so it's not soaked the room with just a little bit on the wall, which is fine. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is just let that come down to temperature. I've set it to eight degrees um, because it's an ale, it's a bitter, that's what I want to drink it at. Um, I'll zoom the camera in, fast forward time lapse, and then, yeah, let's get a drink. Right then, the machine is down to temperature, it's down to six degrees. I can't remember in the last clip whether I said six or eight, but if I said six, great. If I didn't, I meant to say six. It's down at six degrees. Let's get pouring. I even remembered my black sheet pint glass. A proper crummy pour. As always, going the extra mile to prove that I really can't pour beer on my own. I shouldn't be trusting there a beer tap pump or anything. Um, yeah, I did have to adjust the gas halfway through that one because as the start of the keg, you kind of get a load and then you have to back it off. And then anyway, I'm not I'm not made for uh, acute pouring techniques, let's say. Uh, but we do have beer, and to be honest, despite the chunky head on it, the conditioning on that beer looks pretty damn good, I have to say. Um, now. As I said in the intro, this beer isn't readily available, so you will have only had this, probably, if either you've bought one of the 5 litre mini kegs that I've got in the machine, or you've been to a black sheep uh, pub, um, or at least a pub that stocks black sheep ales, because this is their best bitter that is only available in those formats. Now, I have had it before. In fact, I had it in a pub just down the road from black sheep in Masham, North Yorkshire, I believe the town is, um, where the brewery is, and... It was incredible. It's much less heavy and much less deep and rich than the um, the Black Sheep Supermarket Standard Black Sheep Ale. Um, it's much more floral, more easy drinking, smoother. Um, but yeah, now that head has subsided somewhat, let's give it a go. Right, aroma time. Immediately, it's big wafts of Best Bitter, which it is, but sweet, slightly bready malt base to this one, weirdly, which isn't it's not uncommon in bitters, but it's normally a bit richer, a bit more biscuity, if you like. This has got more of that kind of bready German malt influence. And there's a nice bit of kind of floral note on the nose from the hops, but as with traditional British beer, it's not dominant, it's not overly citrusy, it's just a suggestion, if you like. Right then, let's get into it. Cheers. My initial thought, I should have left it at eight degrees, so I'm gonna change that now. Because it is a little bit cold for the beer style, but that's better than I remember it actually, to be honest. That's um, super easy drinking, good mouthfeel, quite comforting in a way. That nice, bready, sweet malt base, really strong throughout, good amount of bitterness in there as well. And then the hop just, in addition to the bitterness, gives a bit of a light, slightly delicate floral um, sensation, but it's not overpowering anyway. It's definitely there, but you struggle to pick out very specific notes if you like. It's just a bit of a light daisy meadow kind of a thing. 
That's the weirdest description I've ever given, I think, in a beer review. But anyway, I think you probably know what I mean. Um, let's do it then. Top to bottom taste test. So initially, low carbonation, as it should be. Um, a tiny bit of sweet, but just tantalizing a touch of bitterness at the front of the tongue. That next phase, you get that very traditional bitter, slight abrasion on the middle of the tongue. Real, I don't know, just old school beer honesty. It is what it is, and it's not always sweet and appealing the whole way through. There is a strong bit of bitterness there. As it gets to the back, it was quite refreshing, but that floral note coming through, quite splashy, quite, yeah, actually, despite it being not a, I guess, a traditional summer drink, that, especially at the temperature it is right now, would be incredible on a warm day. And um, on the swallow, immediately you get a load of that bready malt, real deep, and just, I, like, I love malt character in beer. This has got tons of it. It's not over the top, though. It's just a lot of... It makes good use of what it has, if that makes sense. And then there's quite a prolonged bitterness afterwards. This is proper beer, and for the people who don't like, I don't, the proper is the wrong word, as in this is traditional beer. But for people who historically have said, I don't like beer, they probably won't like this because it's got that real gritty, bitter, been dumped mine all day. Um, apologies, Yorkshire, because uh, there's plenty of mining around here too. I don't know why I felt the need. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's just that, I don't know, lovely, old school, reminiscent beer, I think, is that one. And it's all right reviewing this beer, but also I need to review it in the context of the Beer Monster Machine. Well, it doesn't have quite the body that I think it would have had it come out of one of these, because that's what realistically it's designed for but that said the head's gone nowhere it's absolutely beautiful in the glass and in terms of non heavily carbonated beers that I've had out of this machine I've had a few um, stouts and ports out of it so far I think the conditioning on this one from a first pour might be the best now some of the others actually got better with time as they sat in the machine so I'll have to see how this one goes but so far That is an absolute winner. And you know what, weirdly, I've got a few kegs hanging around in the garage at the minute, and I thought, this is the one I was less bothered about somehow. I think I might have been wrong. It's fantastic. Truly fantastic. Right, um, I think that really is all I have to say about it. Um, if there are any beers you'd like me to try in the Beer Monster or on the Pint 365 hand pump, let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to get hold of them. Uh, but until next time, Thank you very much for watching. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already, subscribe if you will be so kind. And I'll catch you then. Cheers.